Good morning, everyone. Today we have a very special webinar. We've been doing these webinars in, the, in a series, and a lot of them are introductions to Club Express, and some of them are deep dives into particular pieces of functionality like ad hoc forms or documents or blogs. Some of them are new feature releases. But this one is uh, rather timely. This one is special, and it's about the GDPR and the new privacy laws. And GDPR is General Data Protection Regulations. And Dan's going to talk about how this affects you and how it affects your club. So what we're gonna do is we're going to do a little introduction and it's gonna cover mostly what is GDPR and how is Club Express responding to these new regulations and also how clubs and associations need to respond to the new regulations and how your members and non-members need to respond. And then there's how you're all going to handle these forget me requests. And then we're going to go into some Q&A. But let's do a little housekeeping first. All the phones are muted, except for mine and Dan's. And so questions should be entered into the chat window. I will be gathering up the questions. And for those questions that Dan has already answered in his presentation, we'll have a Q&A session afterwards. And a recording of this session will be available. If you go to clubexpress.com and click on the resources tab, there is a tab here for webinars. And so we have today's webinar and you'll see that we've got some very uh, interesting <laughs> webinars coming up next week and two weeks or three weeks from now. But at the bottom of this page, you'll see the recent webinars section here where you, you can look at all of these. And the other thing, is if you are using Club Express, and particularly if you like Club Express, please go to clubexpress.com slash reviews. And here you can click on any one of these buttons here and leave a review so that other people who are trying to decide what kind of association management solution is appropriate for them, they can have the benefit of your experience. And so now I'm going to uh, turn it over to Dan. Let me just spotlight Dan. So Dan, it's all yours and you can give a little brief introduction and then start sharing your screen. All right. And there we go. Good morning, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Dan Ehrman. I'm one of the founders and the CEO of Club Express. And by the way, for those of you who don't know Alan, he is our chief evangelist. He works on all of our webinars, presenting a number of them and certainly producing all of them. He's updating and working on all of the video tutorials and a number of other you know, resources to really help promote and support those of you that are interested in are using Club Express. So I uh, you know, very much appreciate his participation in this webinar. And as he mentioned, we'll be editing the webinar and we'll have it available on our website for those of you that need to share it with your boards of directors or with other organizations, we'll have it available within 48 hours. Okay, so let's talk about GDPR. We're going to do the webinar part for about 35, 40 minutes. And then after that, we'll certainly have time for questions afterwards. So GDPR, as Alan said, is the General Data Protection Regulations. They were enacted by the European Union and actually went into effect last Friday, May the 25th. They are by far the strictest privacy laws in the world, and they directly affect anyone who collects, stores, or processes personal data. And many of you, I'm sure, use online services. And over the last two weeks, you've probably been receiving a, a rush of emails, kind of like you know those Hogwarts letters in, in Harry Potter that just rush in from every single direction. A rush of letters and emails explaining the new privacy regulations. And basically, every cloud-based service has treated this as if it affects everyone worldwide. Even if they only have customers in the US or clients, where everyone has basically decided that these are the strictest privacy regulations. And especially after the Facebook and Cambridge data analytics fiasco that's happened over the last couple of months, people have really decided we need to take privacy and the security of personal data very, very seriously. The reality is, first of all, you don't know if someone's an EU citizen. They could be a resident in your area. They could be a permanent resident. But if they're an EU citizen, even if they're living in the US, they have rights. The other thing to keep in mind is that the US is actually working on stricter 
privacy regulations. We have among the most lax privacy regulations in the world among the major industrialized countries right now, but that's about to change. And I think we've all decided that it makes sense to start right now being strict about privacy and protecting personal data so that whatever comes out from the US efforts and even from other countries as well will already be protected. So under the GDPR, users have certain rights. They have to consent to storing their personal data outside the EU. And basically we've all interpreted that regulation as saying they have to consent to allowing the service to collect, store, and process their personal data. They also have to consent to receiving communications from your organization. And there are two types of communications. There's ones that are required and that are official as part of the organization. Now, everyone here is a membership-based organization. And basically, an official communication is a renewal notice, a payment confirmation, an event registration confirmation, those sorts of emails that are required as part of that person's relationship with the organization. And you'll notice I'm saying the word users, I'm not saying members, because this applies not only to members, but also to non-members who might register for an event or make a donation or participate in a volunteering request. The second type of communication from your organization are those which are optional. Things like general notices, a monthly email from the president, a reminder about an upcoming event, those sorts of things. And Club Express has actually always allowed members and non-members to opt out of receiving those communications. So we have basically sort of made that part of the general privacy part of GDPR. Users also have to consent to sharing their data with third parties. Now, some of that is required. So for example, your club or association or village works with us to process credit card payments. And we work with an outside merchant processor to handle those credit, that credit card processing. That is a third party and users have to consent to sharing their data with a third party like a credit card processor. There is also optional sharing. So for example, if you ever share data for marketing or commercial purposes, they have to consent separately from that, uh, you know, to participate in that, and uh, they have the ability to opt out. Now, there's a scenario that I'll talk about a little bit later on where this might be more widespread than most of you realize. Also under GDPR, members have the right to log in and view and update their data at any time to update their privacy settings. And here we talked about the communications just a moment ago. Non-members also have the same rights, except of course they can't log in. And so we're going to package those rights as part of the opt-out function. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. There's a major right that's part of GDPR, which is the right to be forgotten, also known as the right to deletion. And we're gonna talk about that one in a great amount of detail already, but GDPR allows people to contact an organization and say, I want you to forget me. I don't want you simply to expire my membership or don't send me emails anymore. I want you to forget my personal data completely. And that's, that's a pretty complex one. And we'll talk about that in detail. There is also the right to object to processing. And we're going to be treating that as a delete request because the only processing that we do on your behalf is, is stuff that's required. And so if they object to that, then that's basically, they want to be deleted that they don't want to participate in the activities of the organization anymore. There is also the right to complain to a local data processing authority. And these are organizations specifically set up in the EU. They probably don't apply to us. You know, keep in mind that these regulations apply to things like Facebook. They apply to medical records. They apply to, you know, all sorts of things that are way stricter and way more complex than what we're doing for you on behalf of your club or your association or your village. The other thing to keep in mind is that some of these rights are limited if your club or association or village has a legitimate business reason to retain or process this information. And we'll talk about that in a bit more detail also in just a moment. Now the GDPR defines two roles. The first one is the data controller the organization or person who controls the data. And in the context of Club Express, that is you, your club, your association, or your village. They also define someone called a data processor. And a data processor is generally an organization to which the controller has outsourced 
the processing of that data on their behalf. And obviously, in the case of Club Express, that's us. We are your data processor, you are the data controller. The approach that we could have taken with all of this, because it's really complex. I mean, we actually hired a consultant and sat down for a number of conference calls and, and, and you know, research with that consultant to really try to understand this stuff. And it would be very easy for us to protect ourselves and leave it up to each of you to do things on your own. But as I said, this stuff is really is quite complicated. And we were concerned that you would leave yourselves open to liability if you didn't handle it in at least a reasonable way. The penalties for not responding to GDPR are potentially in the millions of dollars. But of course, things are proportionate. I mean, you need to make a reasonable effort. There's a certain amount of understanding built in. It's not that everything is automatically against the organization and in favor of the individual. But we felt that it was important to try to help our clubs and associations make these reasonable efforts to respond appropriately to these new privacy regulations. And so we wanted to build in the functionality to protect you as a club and an association, but also to protect and you know, advise the members and non-members who use the service. Now, I do need to make a couple of things clear as well. Um, compliance with these privacy regulations is not negotiable. If you want to use Club Express, then you have to abide by the approach that we've taken, you know, which we've been advised by our, our consultants is really the best and safest way to handle these issues. And the second thing to understand is that we are working on a best efforts basis. We cannot take over the legal responsibility for you. Ultimately, your club or association is responsible, but we hope that we're providing you with the tools that will give you, you know, more than sufficient protection in this area. Okay, so in terms of the agreements that we have, the privacy policy has been completely rewritten to conform to the GDPR requirements, and it applies to Club Express and to all customers. We actually heard from one of our competitors because we happen to have an admin account with one of our competitors because we're helping a club or an association convert from them to Club Express. And so we got an email from them where they announced they're revising their privacy policy. And it turned out that they're protecting themselves only. They really were doing nothing for their uh, customers, which was very surprising to us. So the privacy policy applies to us and to all customers. It cannot be edited or added to. And as I said, it's a condition of using Club Express. The terms of use were modified, but only in very minor ways. And the subscription agreement is being modified. And that's in legal review right now. We're adding and toughening up the sections related to privacy and obviously referring to the privacy policy. And probably in next week's webinar, where we're going to announce a whole bunch of new features in Club Express, we'll let you know that the subscription agreement has been updated. Now, under GDPR and under privacy regulations, clubs or associations or villages have certain rights. You have the right to collect, store, and process user data. And again, that's member and non-member data. And you do that in order to run the organization. I, I won't run through the whole bullet list, but if you look at it as I'm talking, you'll see that there's a lot of protections that you have here. Financial records to fulfill legal obligations, to strengthen and grow the organization, to provide effective communications, and to share information with vendors who help to run the organizations. So these are certain rights that you have, GDPR, recognizes those, and they provide the basis for why you collect and store and process this data. But you also have certain responsibilities, and those responsibilities include handling the personal data in such a way as to protect and secure it. Now, by the fact that you're using Club Express, you're actually taking the first and largest step to do that, because we will protect and secure that data for you as long as it's in our hands. So the second responsibility is to configure the new privacy options dialogue, which I will show you in a moment, to appoint a data protection officer, someone within the organization who has the responsibility to answer questions, uh, to receive complaints and respond to them, to handle deletion requests. But you also have a responsibility to educate your administrators, your coordinators, any staff members you have on these privacy rules and on the handling of data. I think it's also important to update your members and your non-members to explain their rights and responsibilities. 
and I'll show you how we've tried to help you in that area as well. You have a responsibility to respond to deletion requests, but there's another responsibility that we really can't help you with, and that is how you handle and manage data when it's exported outside our system. Data that you're maintaining yourselves within the office or on somebody's home computer if they're an officer of the organization. So when you run reports or when you do data exports, maybe it's for backup purposes, maybe it's for data analysis purposes, that data moves outside our control. It's now sitting on someone's computer, it's printed out, it's reports that may be shared at a board meeting or may be used as part of an event that you've got. And you need to be aware of the confidentiality and privacy laws. For example, if there's a deletion request, we can help you delete that data from within Club Express. But if you have external copies of that data, it needs to be deleted there as well. And folks need to understand that when they're walking around with exports and reports and printouts, even thumb drives, data needs to be protected in reasonable ways. Now, we've added a new screen to Club Express. Right now, this screen is not required, but we're going to monitor how many of you associations have actually gone in and completed this screen. Let me show you where you can find that screen. I'm sitting in one of our demo clubs right now, and I'm in the control panel. And if I go to the People tab and scroll down to the Setup section, the screen is down here, and it's called Privacy Options. And this screen has three sections. And the first section, a question to you. And that is, does your club share or sell member or non-member data with third parties for marketing or fundraising purposes? And most of you, I think, are going to say no to that question. But I'm going to present you with a scenario in a little while where some of you may actually need to answer yes. So we'll talk about that in just a moment. The second section on this page talks about the data protection officer. And we encourage you to set up a data protection officer. And let me just jump over to a different screen as well. I should have mentioned this in the slideshow. But when I go to the control panel and the club tab, or this could say association or village or society, whatever, and I go down to the titles section, you'll notice that this section has a new column. It's the DPO, the data protection officer. And when you edit a title, you'll see that there's now a new checkbox here the person holding this title serves as the data protection officer. So there's now an official title within the system. And you can also obviously go to the contact screen. This is a typical contact screen where you can share various contacts. And you can optionally have the data protection officer with their email address appear on this screen. And again, that is definitely something that I would recommend you each do. Let's go back to the People tab and the Privacy Options screen. And so this is just another way of specifying the Data Protection Officer. Now, the third section is a little bit esoteric. It refers to deletion requests and how you want us to handle deletion requests when the primary member in a multi-person membership requests to be deleted. So if you're a sailing club and you have family memberships, so mum, dad, and the kids are all there, primary, secondary, and tertiary members. If dad sends in a request that says, forget me or delete us completely, what do we do about the secondary members and the tertiary members? Typically in that situation, if people join through their personal lives, you would want us to forget all associated members. But if, if people join your organization through their business or professional lives, and somebody makes a request to say, forget me, you may not want to delete everybody else on that membership. It may be one person who's left that organization, but the rest of the organization needs to stay as active members. And right now, the option here is to forget the primary, and we can drop the associated members so that they're still in the database, but then you can work with the organization to say which among the secondary or tertiary members needs to become the new primary member. Obviously, if it's a secondary or tertiary member that says, forget me, we can just go ahead and do that. It doesn't affect the whole membership. So again, this um, screen is on the People tab, the Setup section, and it's called Privacy Options. 
and we encourage each of you once the webinar is done to go in and just configure this screen for your organization. It's not mandatory right now, but if we find out in say 30 days that a lot of organizations haven't done this, we may very well come back and, and say that the first admin who logs in, we're gonna take you to the screen and say, you really need to do this. Now there will be a new user screen as well. This one has not yet been activated. And the reason why we haven't activated it is we wanted to give you all a chance to participate in this webinar and then to send out an email perhaps to your members to tell them that the screen is coming. We are planning to enable this screen at the end of this week, probably Friday or Saturday. And when a member logs in for the first time, we will redirect them to the screen and we will basically say, if you want to continue your login, you have to complete the screen. It is a condition of your membership in this organization. And it's really important that you obtain the agreement from your members for the things that we talked about a few slides ago. So let's just review the screen together. Regulations require that we obtain your explicit consent for the collection, storage, and usage of your personal data. By clicking I agree below that you certify that you've read the privacy policy, and here's a link to that policy, and agree to allow your personal information to be stored and processed in the USA by Club Express on behalf of your club name to receive transactional messages sent by Club Express on behalf of your club name and to share your personal information with third parties for official club business, such as credit card processing. There is no choice here, they have to agree. And by doing so, they give you the ultimate protection to collect store and process their data. Now there is one more question and there may be a second question. So the second question says, you have the option to accept or refuse general purpose emails concerning club business, such as newsletters and event notices. And members can say, I will accept or I do not wish to receive. We don't have a default here. They have to select one of these options. And then depending on this question, in the privacy options screen, they may or may not see this third question. Club may share your information with interested third parties for marketing purposes. You can allow or deny this data sharing. I will allow it or, I, or do not share my personal data. So again, this question may not appear, but in just a moment, we'll talk about a situation where it might need to appear. If you don't agree to these terms, send an email to privacy at Club Express. We've set up that email accounts where we can handle these deletion requests. We also suggest that you set up an email address at your organization, privacy at yourorganization.org, so that you can handle those requests as well. Okay, now here's the scenario I talked about. So let's say as an organization, you say, well, we don't share personal data with third parties for marketing purposes. So the question doesn't appear and users don't answer it. Now you have a conference or a, a big show of some kind and you have exhibitors at that show and those people pay to have an exhibit booth. And one of the benefits is that they get a list of attendees. Well, now you're sharing data with third parties for marketing purposes. So what you should probably do in that case is go in and change the privacy options to show that question the problem is that no one now has answered that question. Now, the way that sharing would happen is that you'd run an export from Club Express. And we're going to be modifying these exports so that there will now be a data sharing column in the export. And it will either say yes, if they've agreed, it'll say no, if they haven't agreed. And if they haven't answered the question, the answer will be unknown. It will be your responsibility to remove anyone from that export who has answered no. And it'll be your responsibility to decide what to do about anyone where the answer is undefined. The prudent thing to do would be not to share their information. But this is part of educating you know, your members. And it's, it's something that we're happy to consult with you about and give you the best advice that we can. But uh, you know, there's a number of things that each organization will have to do to, to consider uh, as part of this overall process. 
Now, the rights that your organizations have are very similar to the rights that we, Club Express, have as well. We have the right to collect and store data on behalf of our customers, you know, personal data. And this is all part of the privacy policy. And you can see a number of grounds or a number of reasons that we have. I won't run through them in detail, but certainly what we're trying to do is protect the platform to make sure it provides an optimum and secure and high performing and reliable experience for you. And that is the basis on which we collect, store and maintain people's personal data. So let's talk about the right to be deleted. This will apply to both members and non-members. Members will soon have an option on their profile screen. Uh, there's a fair amount of programming that needs to be done to support this. We haven't done that yet, but it's okay because when somebody submits a, a delete request, it has to be reviewed and approved within 30 days. And if it's approved, uh, the deletion has to happen within 90 days. So we will also provide the option on the opt-out page for both members and non-members. And eventually the idea is to automate this completely. So what will happen in the future is that a user will submit a request. Either they'll say, I want to expire my membership, which is fine, we can leave the data there. Or they'll say, delete me completely from the database. At that point, we'll send a confirmation request email to the member or non-member in case someone did that maliciously. And it'll say, if you didn't submit this request, then please respond and we will delete the request. We'll send an email notice to the club's data protection officer, and it'll have a link in it to a new user interface where we will list those requests and their status. Any pending requests, you'll have the ability to accept or decline them. You have the right to decline, but you must specify a reason. Of course, someone can object to that reason, so it probably should be a legitimate reason. For example, if you have someone with whom you're having a dispute and you're afraid that they might sue you, well, you have the right to retain their data to provide you with legal protections. I mean, it's a pretty extreme example. I can't imagine here in the US that lots and lots of people are going to suddenly start submitting delete requests. But believe it or not, when we sent out that admin email on Friday, on Saturday morning, we received our first delete request from someone who was obviously an EU citizen, but they were a member of a club or an association here in the US, and they sent in a request saying, I want you to delete me completely. Uh, we forwarded that on to the club or association president. We're waiting for them to tell us to go ahead. And right now, we, you know, they say go ahead. We're gonna go in and delete their information from the database. If you take no action, then after 30 days, we're gonna treat that as an accept we will send an email to the member or non-member, giving them the results of their request. And as I said, this process is not yet built. It'll be built in the next couple of months. But for now, what'll happen if people want to submit requests, they send them to privacy at clubexpress.com. Here's what we're going to do when there's a delete request, because we can't simply just delete everything. I mean, we don't want to mess up your financial records. We don't want to mess up your records of event attendance. Uh, and things like that. So what we're going to do is go into the member database and change the name to name removed. First name equals name, last name equals removed. We will drop them and then we will delete all of their contact information, anything that, that is directly linked to them, addresses, phone numbers, email addresses, anything in the member or business directory and any additional member data answers. We will delete committee and interest requests. We will delete forum identifying info like their handle and their city and state, but we can't delete messages or threads because that would disrupt the continuity of a thread that people might be reviewing or relying on. And if somebody's name is mentioned in the middle of somebody else's message, we really can't delete that. I mean, you know, doing a global search to find every occurrence of John Smith in that club, it's not possible. But GDPR allows for those sorts of reasonable efforts. We will go into your transaction and payment and event registration data, and we will anonymize it. We'll handle secondary and tertiary members based on what you tell us in that screen I showed you earlier. And there's a number of these details that we're still trying to work out. For example, 
if a member has uploaded a bunch of photos, we'll almost certainly have to delete those photos from the system. But if somebody else uploads a photo and there's a picture of that person in that photo, we really can't delete that. I mean, we have no way without, <laughs> you know, millions of dollars worth of facial recognition software development. We have no way of knowing that that person is actually in that photo. So some of these details still need to be worked out. Okay, so just to wrap up, and this is the last slide, and then we'll open things up for Q&A. What do you all need to do? I would strongly suggest that you review the admin email that we sent out last week. And let me just go to that admin email and show it to you. So here is the admin email that we sent out on Friday of last week. I suggest that you review it, including each of the tabs here on the left-hand side, which just recap a lot of the information from the webinar. And by the way, when we post the webinar, we'll also post the slideshow. So if any of you need to share the slideshow with your board of directors, we'll make that available as well. We suggest that you email your members to expect the new privacy dialogue. And in the admin email, we gave you some suggested text. So here's some suggested wording in an email to explain to members and optionally to non-members how your club or association is handling these new privacy regulations. And, you know, there's a number of places there where you want to obviously insert your club name. There's a bullet here that talks about sharing for marketing purposes. And then at the bottom, insert the name of your DPO, president, director, member, whoever's, whoever's appropriate. Obviously, review the updated privacy policy. Certainly, if you have any questions about it, feel free to email our support team or, or me directly. Update that privacy options screen that I showed you earlier and think very hard about the sharing for marketing purposes. Because if you ever share member or non-member event attendee data with a third party who has paid for the ability to get that list, you're sharing for marketing purposes. Appoint a DPO, educate the board, admins, coordinators, and staff about privacy handling and, uh, you know, the handling of data that's exported or that you maintain or keep externally from, you know, data that's outside Club Express. These really are things that each organization needs to think about. And, and you know, for some of you, it'll be very simple. There's one person who handles this data and put a password on your computer, put a password on the spreadsheets. Maybe if there's reports you no longer need, run them through a shredder. You know, just sort of basic, simple stuff that show that you're thinking about privacy and making reasonable efforts to protect personal data. And really that's what GDPR is all about. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off screen sharing now. I can see that we have a lot of questions here, Alan. Just I have been gathering questions for you. We have a lot of questions. <laughs> and, okay. And so I will read them off to you. And uh, the trick is going to be uh, trying to get through all of them. The first question is going to be a pretty easy one that says, will uh, Club Express 8.0 have tools for this type of protection? Well, we've already provided this answer in the, in the webinar. We already have those tools. Um, the screen that you need as an organization, the privacy options screen is there right now. You can appoint the data protection officer right now and you can tell us how you want us to handle certain options. The screen that members and non-members will see will be deployed at the end of this week. Again, we wanted to give you a little bit of time to notify your members and optionally non-members as well. And you know, if the consensus of the, of the people in the group is that perhaps we should wait a little bit longer. I can certainly discuss that with the development team. When members log in and they're suddenly redirected to this screen, we don't want that to be a surprise, uh, but it is something that needs to be done as soon as possible. We have questions, but I'm gonna be plowing forward here. Message says, we send out messages on behalf of local businesses. Is that considered sharing? They don't see the emails of anyone else or have access. I would say no. You're not sharing that data with the local business. The local business is basically asking you to do something on their behalf. Maybe they're paying for the privilege of sending out a blast, some discount coupon at the local pizza shop, whatever it happens to be. But as long as you're not sharing the data with them, I think that's fine. All right. We have a question that says the sample email 
uh, had a link to the privacy policy. Uh, th this was pointing to the uh, Northwest Balloon Club policy. So I had a hard time to find the link for the policy and how to edit it in this email, but I managed to do it by looking at the page source. It says this should be explained how to provide a link to the privacy policy in the email. Well, the, the privacy policy is in the sample email already as a link. It's also available at the bottom of every single page on your website. You put it there automatically, um, and so it's available there. It's also available on our website on the documents page. So, well, I, I won't share it right now, but it, it's certainly available on our website as a document, as a PDF that people can download. It, it won't say the name of your club in the PDF, but it's, it's certainly available there. Some people were having some difficulty in getting to the privacy options link. It was coming up with an error, but it not, does not seem to be happening for everybody. Let me explain that What's one, Alan. We've, we've seen that from a few people. The system, in order to improve performances, does very extensive caching. Now, typically, a club or an association, their information will expire from the cache it, it won't stay in there permanently. If no one is accessing the website, for example, for an hour or so, it expires from the cache. But we certainly have some organizations that are very active users and their information never expires from cache. If you're having trouble, uh, and the problem is that the privacy options page, it's a newer version of the control panel. And so we need to allow the club to expire from cache or we need to remove them manually. If you're seeing an error accessing the privacy options page, just send an email to support or call our support line and they will reset the cash for your club or an association and then it will work. All right. The question is, will there be a report to show the members who refuse question two on the terms of um, privacy page? There's the first I agree button, which is required. And then there's something under that, which is the receipt of general newsletters and you know, event announcements, things like that. And then there's the one about marketing with third parties. So there will be data exports that will be modified to include a column that shows the answer to that third question. In terms of the second question, I believe we already have a report or an export in the system that includes that information. Can the second question be modified to clarify that more specific choices may be made elsewhere, say in the profile, and that this will mean that they get no messages? Similarly, is the second question on the terms of a use, uh, basically this one, uncheck this box to stop receiving general information emails from your club. Is it, is it an extension of what they already have? Actually, the, that checkbox is going away because it really is the same question. Okay. The, the, the second question, that middle one on the privacy screen that members and non-members will see is the same as that checkbox on the contact info page. And so when we deploy that new screen, we will remove that checkbox um, there really isn't a finer degree of control. It's when, when a club or an association sends out a blast email to its members, we have no way of knowing whether that's a newsletter, a monthly briefing from the president, an event announcement. You know, there are lots of, or, or maybe some sort of advocacy or politics issue that's important to share with the members. So we really have no way of, of organizing those or, or determining their content. And so basically we just distinguish between you know, two kinds of emails. There are the official emails related to your interaction with the organization, and there are the optional emails which are sent out from the blast emailing function. There really isn't a finer degree of control at this point. Well, I guess the only other type is uh, you can opt out of, say, forum subscriptions and emails. Yes, you're but absolutely correct. I mean, forums forums are a third kind of email, but but that that can be controlled at a very fine level for each for each individual forum. All right. So, so here's a question that sort of implies that Club Express gets these requests. It said, will you forward privacy requests that you get to the club? And the related question is, how will we know if someone is asked to be deleted? Will you advise? Okay. So right now, if we get a request to be deleted, it'll come into Club Express. We will then manually send an email to your DPO, if not your president or membership director saying, look, we got this request to be deleted. Do you approve or decline? And if you approve, then you just reply. If you decline, you have to tell us the reason. And then we can act as your inter intermediary. It'll be a somewhat manual process until the, the automation part of this is done. Once the automation part is done, someone will submit a request through the website and that will generate a confirmation email to them 
it will generate a confirmation email to your DPO. And the email to the DPO will have a link in it, which will jump to a new screen control panel called deletion requests. And you'll be able to view them and then there'll be a link or a button that will say approve, 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 or decline. And if you decline, you have to specify a reason. And that in turn will generate emails back to the member or non-member. So the goal is to automate and simplify the process as much as possible. We really don't know. I mean, once this all goes live, are we going to suddenly get hundreds of requests? Or is this going to be a non-issue? I mean, we, we really have no way of knowing. I was very surprised on Saturday when we got our first request, less than 24 hours after going live with this. Okay. Um, so we have to do what, what's appropriate, and hopefully it'll be a non-issue for the vast majority of organizations. Next question is, our webmaster will be on vacation for the next couple of weeks. Is it okay to delay responding to the required info? If at the club level, you should fill out the privacy options screen as soon as possible. Uh, if a member is going on vacation and they're not logging in during that time, well, that's fine. You know, that's their personal preferences. We have many, many organizations where people log in once a year just to renew their membership and they don't log in otherwise. And that's fine too. You know, I'm sure we're going to get a lot of people who won't specify their personal privacy preferences for months and months. There's really not much we can do about that. We can't force them to do it until they actually log in uh, the first time. So here's kind of a practical question for what you do with the information. It says, if you have a speaker event and people sign in for the event, it says, can we give the sign-in sheet to the speaker? Well, <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I mean, if there's a sign-in sheet and they add their email address and their phone number, I am not a lawyer. In a situation like this, my recommendation would be that at the top of the sign sheet, you put some language that says, uh, I hereby consent for my personal information to be shared with the speaker for their own purposes. You know, some sort of language like that and maybe make it you know, nice and bold so that when people log in, uh, hopefully their eye is drawn to that and by signing, they agree. Now, keep in mind that once the speaker has that data, it's outside the club's control, but it's now in the speaker's control. And so if the speaker then adds those people to their constant contact or MailChimp mailing list, well, now, the responsibility is with that mailing list and that keeper of the data. And of course, that person also has the option to opt out and they should have through, let's say, Constant Contact or MailChimp, the ability to be deleted completely. Okay, so we have a question here that says, can a link be provided to let a club explain what third party sharing they do? It says, otherwise people will always answer no to this broad possible sharing. I guess That's a very nice idea. Let me make a note of it. Link provided for club to explain. I guess it's kind of like having your forums policy screen. What third party sharing they do. It's an excellent idea. And let me, um, let me talk to the developer who's responsible for, for this project. And I'm, I'm sure there's something we could do. Probably what we would do is added to that privacy options page as an editor panel where you can you know, type in the text that explains um, your kind of sharing. And then that would appear on that pop-up screen. It's, it's a great idea. So, well, that's, that's what the collaboration is all about. We have actually a, a question and it was ed, entered into the chat screen and answered by another member. So I'll give you the, I'll give you the gist of the conversation. That says, after a member deletes from the database, can we give them the option to join through paper? In other words, I don't want to be part of your database. And somebody from the UK says, I'm in the UK and I know that GDPR covers paper records as well. So, are, <laughs> so then they say, well, paper backups need to be shredded as well. Yeah, the, the, I think the point here is that it's not just electronic that they're worried about. Absolutely. I mean, the, uh, this applies to any kinds of records that are maintained, paper, electronic. We have some organizations uh, running on Club Express that do some very specialized things. One of those organizations, uh, you know, 10 years ago, 
used to allow their members to do that specialized thing. I, I won't go into the details, either online or manually through the telephone. And uh, a lot of their members are older. And eventually they said about five or six years ago to their members, I'm sorry, but at this point we cannot afford, we don't have the resources to manage things in two different ways. You really need to start doing things online if you want to be a member of this organization. And they basically said to their members, do it this way or we wish you all the best. And so, you know, again, if you're a volunteer based organization, it's something that you might want to uh, consider. Yeah. So related to that, someone says, well, so if they re submit a request to delete, does that mean that they're no longer members? And someone responded, uh, yes. <laughs> On the other hand, it says, if you have a legitimate interest to hold their data, you have, you have a legitimate interest to hold their data if they want to be a member. So if they ask to have their personal data deleted, they can't remain a member. That's exactly correct, Alan. And, and as, I, as I said on the slide, um, the way we will process these requests is that we will, once the request has been approved, we're going to drop them. And then we're going to go in and, and, and you know, delete any personally identifying information. But yes, okay. their membership is dropped. It's not just expired, it's dropped. They're considered to be deleted or resigning their membership. You may have covered this before, but it says, what if a secondary member wants to be forgotten, but not the primary? The way we're planning on handling that is that we will forget the secondary. It won't affect the rest of the membership. The primary will still be there and any other secondaries or tertiaries would still be there, but the secondary would be forgotten. Those were the questions that were there at the time you ended your slide deck. So Dan, if you want to go into the chat window, you'll see there's a whole bunch of questions. I'll let you pick and choose from those. There was a question from Christy. Does the sharing apply to conference attendees provided to everyone in print who registered and paid? I would say yes. I would say that, that as part of your event registration process, you might want to include a question that says, do you want your name shared with all of the other attendees? So that's something that you're proactively doing for a specific circumstance. And then when you print out the list, the answer to that event specific question would be in the list. And then you would, you would manually maybe sort the spreadsheet by that column and then delete everybody who said, no, please don't share me, uh, share my information. Question from Susan, does deletion include events? We will not delete the event registration record because you need to know accurately who attended an event, but we will anonymize it. So, you know, your event might have 50 people registered for the event and two of those registrations would say name removed. And if there were people attached to those registrations, they, those additional guests would say name removed as well. Question from Steve. In the case of data that is outside Club Express and has been downloaded to be emailed, deleting that data must be viewed on a best efforts basis. Yes, that's absolutely correct. When a non-member tries to make a donation by credit card, this is from David Chosier, what pops up to tell the non-member about the privacy policies? Great question, David. And I think I may not have made that clear during the presentation. That panel that I showed you that members will see when they first log in. Whenever a non-member registers for an event or makes a donation or does anything on the website as a non-member, they will see the same panel. As soon as you start to collect personal data of any kind, we're gonna show that panel to the non-member as well, and they won't be able to proceed unless they, they give their consent to that first question answer the second question, and then potentially answer that third question as well. What happens at member login if they are not new members? Will they see the new screen? Absolutely. Once we deploy the screen at the end of this week, when someone who is a current member logs in the first time, we will redirect them to that screen that I showed you, and they must answer those questions in order to continue logging in. If they don't, we will log them out. We will unlog them in. Okay, suggestion from Charlotte, please delay this for US associations so we have time to notify our members. If any of you feel the same way, please respond in the chat window. And if we get a bunch of people that want a, a delay, we really can't delay too long without risking non-compliance. But you know, if we need to delay perhaps till early next week, we, we might be able to do that.
So a question from Frank, we haven't gone live yet. So will the initial email go out with the introductory email after our database is uploaded and we go live? Uh, it won't work quite like that. The welcome email will be sent out and the welcome email includes the temporary username and password. When members log in the first time, they will see that dialog because we can detect they haven't answered the privacy questions. We will show them that dialogue and they have to answer those questions, basically giving you permission to collect, store and process their data. And then they'll have the chance to continue the login, update their username and password, and finally be logged in properly. Question from John, will members be able to delete photos they've uploaded to put into their photo albums? At the moment, when a member deletes a photo from their album, it remains present in the photo manager. I'm not sure about that, John. I'll need to check. It's a good question. I thought when members upload their own photos, they have the ability to remove those photos. So I need to verify that. There are a question from Christine. The right to be forgotten means anyone can cancel their membership at any time. Will they be expecting a prorated reimbursement? The answer to your first question is yes. If someone says, I'm you know, really disgusted and with your organization and I want you not only to cancel my membership, but I want you to forget me completely. The answer to the second part of the question is, uh, I don't know. I guess that would be up to you as, a, as an organization policy. Maybe you have a policy of no refunds, or maybe you have a policy that says, um, if we're not meeting your needs, we will give you a partial refund. You know, this also can potentially affect those organizations where people might pay their membership monthly or quarterly, but they sign a contract to commit for, let's say, 12 months. Now, if they pay by credit card right now, the bottom line is that that contract probably doesn't mean a lot because they can simply say to their credit card company, um, I'm contesting these charges. And the credit card company will usually side with the cardholder. But really, the second part of that, uh, Christine, is something that you'd have to explore as a, an organizational policy. If a member sends out a Google spreadsheet to sign up for a picnic, name, email, and what you're bringing, how do we deal with that data? If the organization sets up a Google spreadsheet, are we required to remove that information? Well, if a member does it, and it's not stored in Club Express, then we don't deal with it in any way because it's not data that we're managing on your behalf. If it's being done on a club basis, yes, that is data that the club or the association is maintaining, and it's something that you would need to manage and control. If the member is doing it, I would guess that that member is responsible for that data. And um, <laughs> I'm not really sure how GDPR would deal with that. You know, is there an implied contract between the member who send, sent out the spreadsheet versus the member who's responding to that spreadsheet about what they're gonna to bring to the picnic and how many people are coming. Again, I'm not a lawyer. That really goes beyond advice that we can provide. This might be an area where you would need to consult with someone on your own. Is giving a printing company the membership directory to print for our club considered sharing private information? It is sharing private information, but it's for the official purpose of the club. So that's covered by that first I agree question. Printing a membership directory is one of the official purposes of the club. It's not being shared for marketing purposes. And you have a contract with your printing company that requires them to protect the confidentiality of the data that you're sharing with them. So sharing member data for an official purpose of the club, like printing a membership, is covered by that, I agree, that very first option that we provided to you. Can we take the, a question from William? Can we take the lead and delete personal information in advance of sharing anything Club Express intends to do if you create your own privacy link? Absolutely. Uh, William, certainly you could, you know, if you don't want to get us involved, you don't have to. There will be some kinds of information, though, that you cannot delete. And there'll be some kinds of information that you probably don't want to delete, but rather you want us to anonymize on your behalf. And um, so, you know, in the end, we'll probably have to do some of this for you. So there's a, a comment from Martin, 
we're going to get hundreds of requests because there's no obvious loss to the users. In the end, I don't know, you know, we don't know that for certain. Look, the other thing I should mention for those of you who are still on the call is that some of this, you know, this is new to us as well. We started working on this GDPR stuff about three or four months ago and researching it and studying it. Uh, but one of the things that our consultant told us is that this is new for everyone. And to some degree, we're all, we're all plowing new territory and trying to work out the best way to handle this. I think in general, if you've shown that you're, that you're taking you know, reasonable efforts to comply, you'll be safe. But I imagine that there'll be certain things that will need to change um, in a few months after we see what kind of experiences we have. I mean, if, if you know, we start getting hundreds of requests and people are saying, well, you know, I don't care, just delete me, we might need to change the language or add additional options to you know, clarify things for people. So to some degree, we'll have to see how this all works out. But it's very obvious that we and you are taking reasonable efforts to comply. And at this stage in the process, that's the best that we can hope. Question from Susan, do we have to remove the request to be deleted? Well, there is an administrative screen inside the system that will list the requests to be deleted. Once they've been approved and once the deletion has happened, we will remove those records from that table so they won't clutter up the table anymore. Comment from Martin, it is not law in the US. It's not acceptable or practical or enforceable um, within the US. Martin, that is a, a sentiment that we've certainly heard from other people. And it's a sentiment that a lot of organizations have heard from other people. From a, a legal or from a constitutional standpoint, certainly we agree with you. But all of the experts are advising. I mean, I've read dozens of articles online. And as I said, we hired consultants to advise us on this. And all of the experts are advising that even companies based in the US that deal with US members and non-members only, that it's in your best interests to use your best efforts to comply with these laws because it will protect you in the event of a situation that you, you don't envision. It will protect you when the US laws are toughened up. And you know, it's also good practice. It's, it's the best possible practice it shows you in the, in the best possible light. The idea is that members and non-members should be comfortable that you're handling the collection, storage, and processing of their data with all due diligence. These are sensible regulations, especially in this day and age and after the, you know, the Facebook fiasco. And so we have simply taken the approach that this is the best recommended practice and that's what we're going to follow. And by the way, these questions are terrific. I mean, I really appreciate all of them and, and a huge number of you that are sticking around to listen to this discussion. A question from Diane, we're organized into eight chapters and we provide member data to those chapters. Are they considered a third party? Wow, that's a tough one. If the chapters are incorporated by the top level organization, and if people join through the top level organization, and you have one you know, set of member types, which Club Express fully supports, then I would say that the chapters are part of the parent organization. Sharing would not be considered third parties, but you should take some time to educate your chapter administrators. If on the other hand, the chapters are independent, they have their own websites, they have their own membership databases, people join at the chapter levels, they're incorporated separately, if those chapters are running on Club Express, well, great, then they're covered. If they're not running on Club Express, but you're doing manual sharing, then I would say that, that that's a, a tougher question. And it's something that you should definitely discuss with their chapters, with those chapters and find out how they are planning on managing, you know, the collection, storage and, and processing of that personal data. Question from Steve, many of our members do not use or have computers. You're planning to accomplish this, the agreement requirements via snail mail. I, I think that's a good idea. The other thing would be to do it at a meeting. You know, you'll be able to see which members have not answered the question. And so if you have a meeting, 
you could sit down with those members at that meeting and and uh, and collect their answers to those questions. And will the software allow admins to access that portion of the member's profile? The answer is yes. Question, when a person declines, can you please include that it will mean they are no longer members? That's already on that page, uh, it's there already. Okay, from Laura, if someone is removed and they wish to rejoin at a later date, would they just rejoin as a new member? Is there no way to reinstate? Laura, that's absolutely correct. There is no way to reinstate. Once the delete goes through, it cannot be reversed. We are not keeping copies of that data. If they actually delete, go ahead with the deletion request and then they decide to come back, they would simply be become a new member. Any history, we would not be able to transfer that over. So that's a little different than if someone simply is converted to a dropped member. If somebody decides they want to, not for privacy reasons, that they just want to leave your organization, you can simply drop them. But that's different than a delete request. Correct. We can expire them or, or the club or association can expire their membership. They would stay in the database as an expired member. That's different from dropping them completely, which, you know, if there's a delete request, we're going to treat that as a, as a drop. Now, you can also separately drop someone. We won't treat that as a delete request. The, the dropped option will still be there, but there will be people in the database who are dropped where the reason is, the drop reason is delete request. There was another comment here from someone who's getting an error message accessing the privacy page. And again, for those of you who missed this comment earlier, just send an email to support, or you can call our toll-free number and support will reset the cache object for your organization, and then the page will become accessible. Will members who dropped or expired years or months ago be deleted automatically since they won't get emails requiring them to log in? <laughs> That's a great question, Kathy. We hadn't actually thought about that. I will discuss that with the development team. I mean, obviously, if somebody's membership expired years ago, we don't want the we don't want to barrage them with an email that says you have to tell us your privacy settings. If you happen to send an email to expired members and they said, well, you know, I left years ago. I don't want to get those emails anymore. Once they fill out an opt-out request, that could very easily become a delete request from the opt-out page. Um, so we may handle them that way, but I'll discuss that with the development team. Question from Roger. I think we just answered this one. For members who do not log in and consent is obtained orally or on a paper form, can the admins update the consent? Absolutely, yes. Where is the privacy policy on the club website? The question from Kathy. It's at the bottom of every page in your footer. There is a link that, will, that says privacy policy, so it's available there. Question from Paul. Our members do not log in to Club Express. The office handles their member data. Do we need to send them a letter asking for their privacy choices? or some other way. I don't know that you need to do that, Paul. Again, that would be a question to discuss with an attorney, but my suggestion is that that would be a good idea. And there's a question from Steve. I've read that encryption is a solution to anonymization. Why not do that? Well, um, I mean, for one thing, encryption can be broken. If there's an encryption key, then that key can be used to decrypt the data. And our sense is that if somebody requests to be deleted, the, the privacy laws basically say you have to remove their data unless you have a legitimate business reason for retaining it. And we discussed this pretty extensively with our consultants and the approach that we decided on is that the one is the one that our consultants agreed with. Okay, we're getting towards the end here. And again, very much appreciate everybody sticking with us. Just scrolling down to the end here. When will this actually go live where members will see the new set of questions that they answer? An exact date would be greatly appreciated. We were going to do it on Friday. I think the suggestion from a lot of people is to delay until next week. I'll discuss that with the developer, but perhaps we can delay until Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. The screenshot for what your members will see the first time they log in, that screenshot is in the admin email that I sent out on Friday, and it's also in the slideshow. It's a slightly updated version of the screenshot, but, uh, and you know, it may change between now and then based on some of the feedback we received today. But it'll be pretty close to what members will see. What happens if Google farms our info and they still have 
info on one of their searches after a right to be forgotten is, is exercised. Well, keep in mind that Google can only farm info on the public side of, the, of your website. They cannot index stuff on the members side of the website. So you do need to be careful about what you put on the public side of the website. For example, committee memberships, you know, who's on those committees. You know, the Google indexes get updated on a regular basis, but this is one of those gray areas where once the data is outside our control, um, we really may not have the ability to completely delete that data. And GDPR recognizes that. So let's say you have a list of your committees on the public side of your website, and people can look at a committee and they can see the members of that committee. And let's say one of those members has a big fight with the board and resigns from the club and says, forget me completely. If that data has been indexed by Google, maybe that member needs to submit the delete request to Google to say, you've got a page on your index and I need you to refresh that page because there's data there, that, you know, my personal data that I want deleted. Uh, but once it's outside your control, my sense is that you're no longer responsible for that data. When you appoint your DPO in Club Express is that person's email address visible to the public? That's entirely optional. You can decide if it's, if it's visible or not. The other thing you can do is set up a virtual email address. So just like you have membership at myclub.org or info or president at myclub.org, one of the things you might seriously consider is setting up privacy at myclub.org and having that assigned as the DPO's email address. And of course that behind the scenes that gets forwarded to their real email address, but that would certainly handle that requirement and Club Express can do that for you right now. Question from Jenna, if someone responds that they want to be deleted and during the request period changes their minds, can they reverse their request? while it's going through the approvals process, they could reverse the request. Uh, once they receive the email that says that your request to be deleted has been accepted, we're gonna run the deletion process probably once a week. So they might have a little bit of time there, but probably at the point at which they receive that, that, that email, at that point, it's, you know, we would consider it to be too late. Okay, there was a question from Dick about giving you a link to the privacy policy URL. I'll definitely provide that that's not to the pop-up. Question from Colleen, can we have a copy of the chat questions? I think we could probably do that. And then the final question, we're just wrapping up here. For volunteers who do not self sign up, will they get the privacy questions? I think that's a village specific question. And uh, yes, we will be including the privacy questions as part of the functionality, the specific functionality that we provide for aging in place villages, and those details are still being worked out. But, but yes, I mean, that, that's personal data being stored in the system on behalf of your village. That's the end of the questions. I wanted to thank everyone for sticking with us. I know this is a, a tricky topic and certainly probably a surprise for a lot of you how strict this is suddenly becoming. But I think it's, as I said earlier, it's something that the EU, I think, has done us a favor. We're all gonna get a lot more serious about handling personal data, and I think that's a good thing. So I uh, very much appreciate your participation and your support. If anybody has any other questions afterwards, feel free to email support or me directly, dan at clubexpress.com, and we'll do our best to answer them. Thank you.